Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars and it's time for a Luthier's Quick Tip. If you'd like to support my guitar building YouTube channel, visit eGuitarPlans.com and buy a plan. A link is in the description below. Now on with the video. Well, today I've got my humbucker t-shirt on and that means I'm going to be talking about making guitar pickups. And what I'm going to be talking about specifically is how I design a pickup. Now when I say design, I don't necessarily mean the physical appearance of the pickup. What I'm talking about is how I design or shape the tone of a pickup before I actually make it. I have to sort of plan out the process so that once the pickup has been assembled and finished and installed into the guitar, it's going to yield the tone that I want. And to do this, I have to rely on numbers. And that means I'm going to rely on several different types of electrical measurements that we can take from the pickup. Now, obviously these measurements can only be done after the fact, but I can use some of the measurements to forecast what's going to happen and the steps that I need to take in order to ensure the tone that I want is what's going to be produced by the pickup I just made. Now in this episode, this is probably gonna be a three-part series. And in this episode, I'm going to talk about how I start the process by using DC resistance. Now I know some of you out there are gonna roll your eyes because you've been conditioned to believe that DC resistance is useless when it comes to making pickups. That's only half correct. Half of that is useful, the other half is useless. And I'll explain why a little bit later in this video and I think you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. But I can use DC resistance to map out the initial path that I want to follow in order to achieve the tone that I want from a, from a specific pickup design. And to do that, I'm going to use a really cool online calculator that will help me to determine how to wind the pickup in order to get my foot in the door or get on the right path to achieve the tone that I'm after. So let me take you over to the computer and I'll explain what I'm talking about. This is the online pickup coil estimator. And if you'd like to check this site out yourself, I'll put a link down in the description below. What this calculator will do is it's going to help me to determine how many winds of wire I need to put on a bobbin in order to achieve a specific level of resistance. So really what I have to do first is I have to decide what level of resistance I want. And I generally follow a simple rule of thumb. And that is the lower the number, uh, the resistance number, the brighter and quieter the pickup is going to sound. The higher the resistance number, and this is measured in ohms here, but the higher that number, the darker and the louder the pickup will sound. Now we're, we're talking in some generalities here and in truth later on as I continue to refine the shape of the tone there will be more details to focus on but for now we're just trying to get our foot in the door. We're trying to get on the right path headed in the right direction to achieving the tone that we want. So what I'll do is I'll decide whether I want a, a, a bright sounding pickup or a dark sounding pickup or something in between. And then I will choose a resistance number, which I will type into this field. Now there's also some presets that I can select from depending on the type of pickup that I'm going to make. And um, these presets are fairly useful, but what you'll need to do probably is measure the bobbin itself and then down here in the bobbin core dimensions you can input the actual dimensions of the bobbin that you're going to be winding on so that you can get a really accurate number. Then what I can do is select the wire gauge and the type of insulation. Now my feeling on this is you always want to wind your bobbin with the fattest thickest wire you can pack onto it. The reason for that is the wire is sort of like a, a uh, a water pipe. The bigger the diameter of the water pipe, the more water can flow through it. Well, in terms of 
the coil wire, the fatter the coil wire, the more of your signal can flow through it without clipping off any of the frequencies. So I always try to go with the fattest wire possible, and that's typically a 42 gauge wire. So let's say I wanted to wind a fairly hot humbucker, something in the area of 16,000 ohms. Because there are two bobbins wound or wired together in series, I have to divide that 16,000 ohms in two, which is 8,000 ohms. So each bobbin would have 8,000 ohms of resistance. And then I can click calculate the winds, and what I get down here in the windings by fill factor table is the total number of turns based on the design of my winding machine. Of course this means I have to kind of test my winding machine to see which of these uh, possible scenarios matches my machine uh, the closest. And as I have determined it's the, the tight scatter that seems to match my machine the closest. So I know that with 42 gauge single build insulation wire I would have to put just over 8,900 turns of wire. Now in truth I can't fit that much wire onto a humbucker bobbin. Almost 9,000 turns is, is going to end up spilling over the flanges and it's just not going to fit. So what I can do if I want to stick to this resistance number is I can try a different gauge. And in this case, I'll try a 43 gauge, calculate the winds, and it drops down to 7,585 turns. I could probably get away with this, but I'd be taking a little bit of a risk. If I wanted to play it safe, what I could do is drop down to 44 gauge, calculate the winds, and here I'm down below 7,000, which I feel a little bit more comfortable with. So that's what I would use uh, in terms of the number of turns to achieve the level of resistance that I was shooting for. Now, let's say I wanted to make a more of a, a traditional PAF style, you know, Gibson PAF humbucker, something that's going to be at the opposite end of the spectrum uh, from this really loud high powered pickup. I would probably shoot for a total resistance of about 7,000 to well 7,500 to 8,000 ohms. So divide that in two since they're two coils and that's going to be well we'll say 3,830 ohms. And we're we're pretty sure we can fit the 42 gauge wire on there so I'll select that and I'll go with a heavy build of insulation, click, uh, calculate the winds, and the tight scatter shows that I need to put 4,774 turns of 42 gauge heavy build insulation wire on the bobbin. So with this information, I'm now ready to actually wind the bobbins. Now remember earlier when I said that resistance only tells us half the story? Let me bring you in a little closer and I'll demonstrate why that's the case. So what I have here is a humbucker which I have wound recently and I've finished the assembly soldering up all the wires and everything. The only thing I haven't done is I haven't installed the magnet yet and the magnet that will be installed in this pickup is an Alnico 5. But what I can do is I can now measure the actual DC resistance of the two coils as they are wired together in series. And I'm using a multimeter to do this. And as you can see, I hope you can see on the screen of the meter, it's reading 7.66. And there's a little K symbol here in the, in the corner. And what that means is it's actually 7,660 ohms of resistance. Now, as you know, the coil itself contributes about half of what we need for the tone that we're after. The other half is going to be supplied by the kind of magnet that we use and its strength and the shape of its magnetic field. But watch what happens when I install the magnet into the pickup and then once again check the resistance level. It's the same, 7,660 ohms. So as you can see, 
The resistance measurement is the same with or without the magnet. However, the magnet we know is going to contribute at least half of what the tone is going to be consisting of once the pickup is finished. So resistance is only really halfway useful in determining the tone because it's not taking into consideration the magnet or the magnetic field it generates. To do that, we have to use a completely different measurement. And that's what I'm going to be talking about in the next episode. Mm -hmm.